is Sheila Dorsey Vinton, Executive Director of the Asian Community and Cultural Center. We're taking a tasting tour of Lincoln. We're at Little Saigon Oriental Market. Let's go check it out. We're joined by Tui Wen and Danny Wen, and they're here to tell us a little bit about um, how Saigon Market started and Saigon Plaza. Uh, so thank you for having us here today. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So how long has this business been in operation? Uh, almost 25 years. Almost 25, year, 25 years. Can you tell us a little bit about how the business has grown from when you first established it until now? First established it in 1992, up in the corner of Waggy Drug, okay. where Davis Barbecue used to be, the little shop oh, there. Oh, yeah. So over the time, just about how many years since we were there? Uh, about a few months. A few months, and then we moved over to this building here. And so you had a, a market and a restaurant, a, a small restaurant as part of... Yeah. of that came uh, after when the builders moved out. Okay. So we expanded the grocery store over. Uh -huh. And right where we're standing is where the restaurant used to be. Can you tell us a little bit about when you first came to the United States and, and uh, you know, what, what uh, year was that and, and what were your feelings about that experience? Uh, I came to uh, America 1980. 1980? Yeah. Okay. And I go to school. After I go to school, uh -huh. and I get married, yeah. and I think it's that I want to start business. In America, we have a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. to open business. And you've opened such a successful business. So now not only do you have the Saigon market, but the whole plaza is uh, owned by you and you rent out to other businesses, yes. correct? For time, it becomes very small and every year Lincoln getting bigger and bigger. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today, and I know Danny's going to give us a tour of the market. Okay, let me show you guys around. Okay, thanks. So um, we have a lot of ramens, uh, all sorts of types, Korean, Japanese, Chinese types of ramens, instant noodles. And most popular is our noodles um, for boiling. Well, wow, look at all these noodles. All we have aisles of noodles from, say, you want lo mein to boon or pho. We have all that in stock. We have um, for Chinese, Japanese, lo mein, stir fry, just name it, we have it. Oh, so, great. Yeah. And over here we have also all the vegetables. We have the best Thai basil in town. Um, most popular is Thai basil. We have bamboo shoots. Yeah. This, this is one of my favorite reasons to come to Saigon Market is because look at all of these vegetables. And uh, one of the things that I love about Vietnamese cuisine in general is the addition of just fresh and raw uh, vegetables to most things, right? So um, this is culantro. We see that in, um, you can eat that in pho as well as the basil. Um, what are some common uses for the bamboo shoots? Um, for um, soup ball, uh, based stews. All different Those kinds are, of... They add texture to the food and the flavor. We also have fresh pepper lime leaves versus the dried out spiced version. This is a really key ingredient for Vietnamese and Thai cuisine, yes. right? Mm -hmm. This is fresh turmeric. This, there's all the rage these days to make oh, yeah. your own fresh turmeric tea. and yeah, it's very uh, healthy. And we also carry a big variety of yams. Ginger, ah. so we have really big cloves of ginger. Yeah. Salads, beets. Oh, okay. They're natural uh, form, so. Another thing I love to get here is the little eggplants and even this other style of eggplants. Style of And look at all these different types of mushrooms. We also carry coconuts, right? Uh, three three oh. types, young, old, yeah. and, uh, and older coconuts. So this is a young coconut. Young coconut without its... Uh, Oh, without the shell. Outer skin, and then this is the older yeah. coconut. From and Mokir. it comes with a straw. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> oh, another really key ingredient for Vietnamese mm -hmm. and Thai cuisine is lemongrass. So you can get it fresh here. And we also have galanga too. Oh, so. that's great. These are um, like the bamboo shoots I showed you mm -hmm. before. This is actual um, raw form, so this is really good for making stew stocks and all that. So. Great. Uh, very, very rare to have these, but we got them here. Yeah. So. What are these? Those are the banana stalks um, within really? the little baby bananas in the inside, the oh. seeds. So I think it, it's at the end of the banana. Where, really? Yeah. And what do you use that for? Um, pretty much to cook and make the, the stews too. Okay. So these are stew-based stew, stew -based stuff. Stew-based things? Yeah, they're very, kind of like an unripe banana. You taste that? Mm -hmm. But when you put it in a stew, it breaks it up for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, is this bitter melon? Yes, bitter melon. Okay. Now, uh, my staff at the Asian Center have tried to teach me how to eat bitter melon, and it is bitter. <laughs> yes, very bitter. But, but it is an acquired taste, and it's really delicious. And you also stuff mm -hmm. them with um, pork, beef, or oh, okay. you know, noodle stuff in there. You yeah. stuff them. Now, the one reason why people, a lot of Asians uh, eat this is to get their heart rate going. Oh, that's right. Kind of like um, uh, gets you warm inside yeah, the bitterness. Yeah. <laughs> we also have the Indian uh, bitter melons here. Oh, Indian those version. are really cool. Yeah, it's pretty different. And we have tiles and large roots. Mm -hmm. Papaya? Papayas are, we have two types of papayas, the ones that are for um, cooking with mm -hmm. and the one that's uh, for eating as a fruit when it's ripe and yellow. Is this a cooking one? This or? is the, yeah, the unripened one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And of course these wonderful oh, chili. chilies. Oh, we also carry okras. Oh, yeah. We have the best okras in town. So yeah. Like these, the sliminess of them is really good. Or you have fried okras. Chips. Sure. Those are really good and popular. Now uh, this right here is um, fratui. So this is to make a pho with um, the more fresh type of noodles that's still wet. So kept the uh, fresh here. And you can also do it with the drier noodles, uh -huh. but I prefer these the most. Yeah, yeah. these are they have the most really delicious. elasticity. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if you're gonna make your own pho, you come here and get these noodles. We also carry jars of kimchi. Okay, kimchi is uh, like a fermented cabbage. It's like a whole cabbage, like a Napa cabbage, or you can also do cucumbers and all sorts of things. But they're fermented in um, the it's called um, the pickle juice that they have. It has the spices in it. And what they do is they have a whole cabbage and they'll just cut a top part, then middle part, and, and then the bottom end. So there's varieties of kimchi you you, uh, you can have, like that gives you different textures of the cabbage. Yeah, it, and it's so delicious. It's uh, fermented with garlic and ginger and onions and green onions. Then I make my own kimchi actually, but it's a much easier to just buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you have some. Awesome. <laughs> We carry a variety of um, fish, from salt water to fresh water to brackish water fish. So we have all sorts for every um, every uh, culture. They, mm -hmm. have, they like their certain type of acquired fish taste. Sure. Well, they have stewed chickens, ducks, goats, pigs. Uh, we even have boars. So mm. we have all, all that wow. here. Beef selection we get every week is over here. Um, pretty much the bone cuts for making stews. Um, stew so hands. this is what we might use to make pho, right? It's, yes. Uh, we would throw some of those bones into a pot to make some pho. And we also have like um, pork bellies, pretty much all the meat here. So. Yeah, yeah. Pork belly is so delicious. Uh, and it's something that's eaten just about in every Asian country that I know of. Uh, in South Korea, they call it samgapsal, and it's sliced thin, and you uh, barbecue it. And the Vietnamese way is really, really delicious too, and yeah. cutting and and roasting it until yeah. the, the uh, fat gets really nice and crispy. Yeah. And here we are with our fish display. We have our shrimps, tiger shrimps, our normal shrimps, squids, and we also have liver, chicken liver, pig ears, and chicken feet. So it's all over here. And our other displays are whole fish, catfish bass, birdfish, um, cod, a uh, mackerel, sorry, mackerel, and red red drum, and also redfish. So often. here's tilapia. Yep. Wow. Very good tilapia. And just yeah. get them and fillet them, put them on there. Very clean, clean fish. If you look up at the display here, we have your number one, number two, number threes, all the way to number eight, six. So it tells us you want four or five slices, the head cut off or gutting it. So it's all, um, it's all depending on how you want to cook it. So which one is your favorite? I'd say my favorite is the bass. So. Okay. Yeah. This I like one. Uh, yeah, putting on a, di a dish and then baking it and wrapping it in um, in kind of like uh, spring rolls. Oh, yeah. Spring rolls with some um, mush mushrooms and noodles. So wrap that up with some fish sauce. That uh, sounds amazing. <laughs> and can we talk a little bit about the fruit here? Yeah, we have our biggest one. The biggest fruit we have is the jackfruit. That's and, amazing. Uh, oh my yeah, goodness, that's so heavy. Really big. <laughs> It's uh, tricky because you have to look at the texture, the color uh -huh. of the fruit. Uh, there's a there's a yellowness to it. If you eat it now, that when it's green, you kind of have that banana uh. when it's not ripe yet. But once it yellows enough where it kind of browns mm -hmm. more, you have that sweetness. But if you let it brown even more, it has even more of a sweetness without the jackfruit uh, smell and taste. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this so is not quite ripe yet. It's getting there. It's, it's almost there. there. It's good now, okay. but if you want it sweeter, you just let it ripen okay. a little longer. And 
Jackfruit looks a little bit like the famous durian, right? Yes. But they're yes. very different, I've heard. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> they're big in size, but they're okay. different. Okay. We come to the uh, bananas. We have the mm. burrow bananas, the small baby bana bananas. Yeah. If you're a banana fanatic, I'd definitely recommend these bananas. They're very, oh, very sweet. And I've heard them called monkey bananas before. Yeah. I said. Mm. But they're so cute. And we also have the uh, large avocados. These are um, different avocados. type of avocados compared to the ones we have in our superstores here. Wow. Um, we have, these That's are a buttier. Stuff. They have more, yeah, more yeah. fresh too. Yeah. Wow. And our mangoes. Um, when it comes down to, to the springtime, we'll have like 10 varieties of mangoes. Mm -hmm. But right now, since we're just starting the season, we'll have two or three types. This type is the more common ones that, that you'll find in other mm -hmm. supermarkets. Um, mm -hmm. This one right here has a... So it's sweet too, but it's a different type of sweetness compared to this one. It's kind of subtle. Okay. But once you like eat both of them uh, side by side, you can tell which one, what kind of sweetness they have. So. Okay. Oh, what's this one? Our dragon fruits. It's kind of a bit weird because when you chop this open, you can, it's hit or miss with sweetness. Yeah. But the texture and the flesh inside, it's, okay. it gives it that, that uh, gelatin kind of feel in your oh, mouth. Oh, sure. It's pretty good. And I know it's white with black seeds in it, right? Yep. And it's, it's sometimes um, a little sour? And sweet? Sometimes, yes. Okay. It depends on the time you cut it open, so it's kind of weird. It's hard. Oh my word. Mangosteens. Mangosteens. Fresh mangosteens are so delicious. And how much is a bag of mangosteens? They're very expensive oh, yeah. because the nutrition um, supplement yeah. companies, they're actually on to these um, fruits. Right. They're really good for dieting. Yeah. So they're said to block out fats and all that stuff that harms your body, so it's pretty good. If you want to give yourself a treat, buy some mangosteens. What are these? Uh, longans. And it's similar to like a lychee. a lychee where you have to peel and inside is the fruit and they're really delicious oh, yeah. too. And we also carry flan, uh, Vietnamese jello, it's really good. And what's this? Um, it's, it's a Vietnamese type of dessert, grass jelly on the bottom with the, with the green noodles. Right. These are green uh, gelatin noodles. It goes on top mm -hmm. and we top it off with some cream and a special sweet sauce. These are really, really good. These are really, really good, yeah. We have a uh, special pastries here. My favorite is this cheesecake. It's a light, light, cheesy taste, but it has a fluffy texture that you want from a cake. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Danny, for taking us on a tour. No problem. Uh, I've got pleasure. to see a lot of different things that I and vegetables that I didn't know uh, existed before, yeah. and so I'm excited to try them later.